following up on Martin's question, you know, when most people talk to you, they're talking about the sort of go-go years of Ferris and that. But what happens after that, when that all kind of falls apart? Like when Betsy Baker comes and writes that article in 1970, 71, about, about LA, she says, I don't recognize the place from the one that everybody was talking about with the parties on La Cienega and all of that. It's like you, nobody has it, no, none of the artists are even showing in galleries in LA uh, at that point. And it, and it felt like that era had come to an end. Uh, well, I, you might be right. And, uh, but there was a uh, more or less scene happening that went beyond Ferris Gallery, but it was centered right on the street of La Cienega. And uh, a number of galleries up and down the street, uh, mostly galleries that didn't, um, I don't, didn't have a message like F Ferris did. And, but Monday nights, there was a walk. People walked up and down uh, La Cienega and went in and out of one gallery and into another, and they would always go to buy Ferris, and uh, and then people would generally migrate up to Barney's Beanery, and that was a that was sort of the local hangout for the art scene. It was the what do you call it, La Coupole of Los Angeles, and um, and it it uh, it sort of completed the picture. You know, where you've got a, uh, this cultural thing happening and then you can go drink some beer and get rowdy if you wish. And uh, so it was, a, it, was actual, it was an actual scene. And, uh, and then when the gallery closed, well, then that was, um, that uh, posed a kind of sad end to, uh, there was no more clubhouse. And uh, all these, uh, unpredictable, crazy artists didn't have a place to go. And uh, they were still also making, making way as artists. I mean, they were, they were doing their own things and, and have kept, kept it up for decades since that happened. So it was kind of an end of a particular era but nonetheless, it didn't, uh, there was no spirit that was killed by the closing of uh, Ferris Gallery or, or the Monday Night Walk. So, um, uh, slowly things began to progress. Sooner or later, there were n younger artists coming along and, and um, new voices, new, new this, new that, and the Pasadena Art Museum was a, a critical locale, a critical venue for um, open exploration, and that was all led by Walter Ops. I mean, he just, he had this great idea, and he uh, didn't, I don't think he knew he had this great idea, <laughs> but then, you know, he created that uh, Marcel Duchamp retrospective, which was uh, uh, right there a very a valuable thing for, for uh, any artist. And I remember that it was, there was even respect and wonderment about this guy Duchamp, the very fact that he would announce that he's not going to paint anymore. And somehow we all thought, God, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Here's a guy who, you know, ceremoniously says, I'm not going to paint anymore. I'm going to play chess. And wow, we just thought that that's the new thing. I don't know. I don't, none of us tried to emulate him. <laughs> but um, that sort of, he brought us all into another kind of circus. And, um, and Walter Hobbs was right there. He was as creative as any Marcel Duchamp. I mean, he, he, he had, and the fact that those two got together, Duchamp and his, and his work and, and Walter Hobbs, I mean, that was, that was a beautiful marriage. And, and that was also a very 
uh, a culturally rich period. The opening and um, all the way down to uh, the photo of Eve Babbitt's playing chess nude opposite uh, Marcel Duchamp. Uh, and uh, and then, you know, the Pasadena Art Museum and, and things were kind of slow to go here uh, compared to New York. I mean, uh, New York was like the center of the heartbeat of the art world. And, uh, but things were becoming more stable here. And there were actually people who collected art and, uh, and some young people who had money at the time, like, Walt, uh, like uh, Dennis Hopper, who, uh, very unusual person to have uh, undivided attention to what's going on in the art world. And then at the same time, he's making a movie somewhere and then he wants to come back and make some paintings over here. And meanwhile, he'll collect your art. I mean, now that, that, that there's somebody who's, uh, who is really going against the grain. Uh, and we had respect for for actors and people making movies and and yet we didn't feel like that they that world covered us they they were not really so interested or sold on on us as being artists i mean they were you know you mentioned art to those people and they think oh van gogh yeah i mean it all art world art world stops at van gogh um Dennis Hopper, fortunately, could see beyond that, and uh, and so eventually more people uh, began doing that and uh, kind of changed the landscape out here.